All right, what's up guys? It's Tony Holiday. Welcome back to the channel. Last week I posted a video about how to make a beat for Jamin and Jay Park, and I actually skipped over a section in there to do with uh, background vocal. Now, a lot of you ask questions about that and how to go about making that, and today I'm gonna show you exactly how I made that background vocal and how you can apply this to your productions as well. Basically, I just use my iPhone to record a voice memo. I airdrop it into Logic. I add a couple things post-processing and then the audio track just sits in the back and it fills in some nice frequencies and gives some different variation to the track. It's super easy. I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it today and how to get it sounding good and nice and key and everything in your track. The second thing I wanna talk about is I did mention starting a Discord server as well. As of today, I actually set it live so you guys can go and join that now. The link will be down in the description. It's going to be a cool space for you to chat music, talk internet culture, basically just a cool space for us to hang out and get to know each other a little better while learning music production. But yeah guys, with that being said, let's jump into Logic. I'm going to show you how I did that vocal part for that beat I made last week in the Jamin and Jay Park how to make a beat for video. It's super easy and I'm going to show you how to do it right now. Let's go. All right guys, you should be able to see my screen here. I just have the project from that last video open here. We'll take a brief listen to it so I can show you where the vocal part sits in there. What we're gonna be focusing on is this vocal new recording 50, and that is the actual voice memo that I used, and then added some post-processing as you can see over here. We'll take a listen to the vocal recording just as is, and then I'll add the beat it afterwards so you can see where it fits in there, and then I'll show you exactly how to get this and add the processing to it. So. Let's go to here where the kind of chorus is. I'll solo out the vocal recording and then we'll go from there. Then if I turn on the whole track here, this is what it sounds like with everything else. You'll be able to hear it kind of tucked in the back there behind all the other instruments. So it adds a bit of something to the track. If I mute it, you'll see it's kind of missing a little bit. And I do that throughout the track anyways, just to create variation, but it is something that kind of fills in the chorus nicely. So I'm gonna show you exactly how to do this now. To start, let's just solo this. I've done all the processing and everything to this already. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually gonna grab the uh, original recording from my iPhone here which is in voice memos. So if I go to my app library and my voice memos, I know this one is new recording 50, which is uh, labeled here in Logic. So if I go to new recording 50 and I play this, this is gonna suck, but trust me, we're gonna fix this afterwards and I'll show you exactly how. So if I play it. So that's the original that we turned into this part here. Now, let's drop this into Logic and I'm gonna show you the process in order to do that. We can go to these three little dots here from the recording. Once you've recorded your voice memo, you can do this. Then you go Share, and then we'll do MacBook Pro. And AirDrop should just put it right in there. And it's now in My Downloads. So if I'm in My Downloads here, um, under the All Files, you can also just pull up the finder and drag it in here. I'm pretty sure that this one just got moved in as new recording 53, because it's a duplicate. I've done this a few times. You can just drag it into your project, drop it, close the all files, and now you have this one. And they look, yeah, they look identical. So now you have the original here. And the way that I recorded it was I put my headphones on while the beat was playing. I recorded into my phone so that my phone didn't record any of the sound that the actual beat was playing. That way I know it's in time. I just have to find out where the one is, where I started singing, but it'll be pretty easy as you were singing to the beat that you uh, originally had playing in the headphones. Now let's make it better. The first thing that we wanna do here is open this up and we're gonna go to this flex mode here and as well in here and we'll turn on flex and we're gonna do flex pitch, which is the top one of the drop down here. This will show you the actual notes based on the audio file. It analyzes it and makes them into these sort of semi MIDI notes here that you can move around. I don't do too much processing in here, but what I do just to make sure that everything's on the same playing field is I'm gonna find the key of the song. So we'll go out of flex mode here, go to this part, which is the MIDI that I wrote the piano. And I'm pretty sure 
it's F sharp uh, minor. So the key of this song is F sharp minor. If you're not sure how to find out the key of your song, but maybe just YouTube that if you're not sure, and I'll probably think of a video for that later on in the future. We can go back to this new recording 53 here. We can open up the audio file. So as you can see the, the flex notes that the program has made here based on the audio file. We can select them all by pressing Command A once we're in this window. The scale quantize, we're gonna do F sharp and this will be natural minor. And as you can see, all the notes snap there to different notes which is going to ensure that we're in the key of F sharp minor. Let's listen to this now in F sharp natural minor with the snap notes, and then we can adjust to taste from there. So. So in terms of the notes, it's actually pretty on despite it sounding terrible. The one other thing that I like to do is this middle little dot here on the bottom, it says vibrato. You again select all the notes and you drag the vibrato down. I don't do it too much, maybe down to like 50% or higher. That just allows the note to be a little more steady. It's not so shaky there. It also helps with when you go from note to note. So this one here, that moves up to this one. Let's try the pitch correction just to see. So if I move this to 100, you can see that when I put the pitch correction up to 100 from zero, these notes don't have the slight fine tunings there anymore. They'll all snap exactly. You can see they all now lie on the notes corresponding to a keyboard. So let's listen to this. And if it's too robotic, I don't want to do it. A lot of this is going to get lost in the reverb and the OTT afterwards. Let's just see what this sounds like. <laughs> So I actually like that. Let's do that. The pitch correction's at 100. The scale quantize at F sharp natural minor. We've moved the vibrato down to about 58% for all the notes. Now it sounds pretty boring, but this way at least we know that everything's gonna be in key that way and there's not too much variation moving around. As I said, when we add the post-processing, it's going to give it a little more flavor in that so everything kind of blends together and it's not so choppy. Let's do that now. We can actually get out of this flex mode here. We now will move up and do this other vocal recording and we're gonna steal these plugins from it and move them on to vocal recording 53. So to do this, you can press X on your keyboard, which will bring up your mixer and all your tracks. And we know that this one here that has the S is soloed is the one that we used already in the track. This other one here, new recording 53, is the other one, it's just right next to each other. We'll start to drag over plugins to change up the vocal part. So the first thing that I did was and I added EQ, a channel EQ here, and I just moved out the lows pretty high up there to around 300 Hertz. I bumped up the 1K and I dropped down around 2,500. I also took out a lot of the highs. It's kind of necessary here because we are gonna add them back later with the OTT to kind of crisp it up. But some of these high end we don't need right now. Let's take a listen to before and after. This is before. <laughs> and then the EQ. <laughs> It just cleans it up a little bit, not too noticeable at this point. This will serve as a good foundation before we add the other ones. The next one I did was a compressor. I think I just used, yeah, studio vocal preset. And I think I just did a little bit of messing around with the ratio threshold attack release, which basically is just making the quiet parts loud, the loud parts quiet as you would use a compressor to make it more of a steady sound for a vocal part. <laughs> Next up, this is the only plugin here that is not free and it's not a necessity for this. However, I do like to use it for this and that is Little Alter Boy. This one is actually just changing the pitch and formant and bringing it up 12. You could use a vocal transformer that comes stock with Logic. This, in my opinion, is just the best voice manipulator that I've found. So let's take a listen with this on. And here's the settings. If you do have Little Alter Boy already, you can use this. I think it's only like 30 bucks or something. It's a pretty good pickup. This is what that sounds like with Little Alter Boy. And that gives it that signature kind of squirrel sound there. I turned the mix down a bit so the original is still in the back, but the majority of the mix is with the high pitch there. It also makes it sound like there's more than one person singing because you have the high and the low end. 
Next up, this is one that's gonna really make a big difference, and that is the Valhalla Supermassive. Now, this is a free plugin by Valhalla DSP. They make awesome reverbs and delays. Really, really like them. These are the settings I have here. I just use the massive vocal preset, and I probably turn the mix down and the delay down a little bit. We'll listen to it without. And I'll turn it on now. So that gives it that space that kind of blends it into each other and it sits nicely in the back. It's covering a lot of frequencies. It's pretty dampened because you have the reverb on there and the EQ and everything. So this is kind of like one of the deciding factors as to how it sits in the back a lot better. Now, after that, we have uh, over the top compression, also known as OTT. Gets a bit of a bad rap sometimes, but I love using it for stuff like this. I just turned the depth down to 41. I killed the low end, I did the mids up a bit, and I turned the high end down a little bit. Upward, downward, 154 for up, 121 for down. And this is gonna just kind of add that crispiness to it that a traditional vocal chop or vocal part would have in the background. Let's take a listen with this off. <laughs> do it with it on. I like OTT a lot because it brings out a lot of the parts that you kill with the reverb. The reverb makes it really muddy and ambient and that is the goal of having that but you do need this to kind of bring back some of the parts so that when it is amongst other instruments you can hear it really well. And then at last, I just added one more channel EQ, which I just took out a bunch of low end, a bunch of high end, and then I boosted right around a thousand hertz here. And what this does is it just isolates a certain part of the vocal part that we want to sit amongst the other instruments. In this track, if I you know come up here, there's like a piano going on, there's another set of keys, there's another synth in the background. If you have the vocal part, even if it's just kind of hanging around in the high and the low end, it can take away from those instruments. That's not the goal of this. It's not the focal point of the track. It's supposed to sit nicely in the frequencies in the middle that just kind of fill up space so that it sounds like a more full beat. Here is without this. This also eliminates a lot of that crispiness that the OTT brings that you don't want. You do want a lot of it that comes on, but this will eliminate the stuff that you don't. So we'll turn it on. That's what gives it that kind of distant underwater sound, which is super necessary here. So the last plugin that I added onto this was just Cable Guy Shaper Box. I don't actually think I used it too much. I think it just kind of comes in and out in different verses. And what I used was the time warping ability just to give it some variation. It's not necessary by any means. I think I was just experimenting when building this. But again, once you have a good bass vocal part, like we built with the channel EQ, compressor, little altar boy, super massive over the top, and making it a final EQ of just a certain frequency, that's when you can start manipulating it and using things like time manipulating plugins or other delays and things to give it more life. So you can use the same vocal part throughout the whole track and automate certain plugins coming off and on of it. Keep the listener interested to one vocal part that you did over four bars and you've just, I guess, brought it different life throughout the track. Let's listen to this part. We will mute the old one and we're just gonna make sure it fits in. Bring the volume down around where it was to the other one. This is what this sounds like. It looks like what I also did here was make some chops for timing. It sounds the exact same, just the timing's a bit off. But what I was doing is just cutting it here and then maybe moving it slightly a couple milliseconds ahead or behind. You got the processing, you got how to get it from your iPhone. But that's how I made this one in the Jamin and J Park beat. All right, guys, that's pretty much it for me today. I hope you found that helpful as to take just a simple voice memo that you record on your iPhone, add some basic processing to it, and then add it into your tracks to give it some more life and volume. If you like this video, Make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel as there's always more music production content coming out. Please do give me a follow on Twitter and Instagram and join the newly started Discord server where we're all gonna be talking about music and stuff on there. Come and introduce yourself, post some of your beats for feedback, and yeah, hopefully we can build a community of music producers and like-minded people and just learn about music production, make some friends online. But thank you so much for watching, you guys. I will see you in the next one. This is Tony Holiday. Take care.